Hello, Mr. Harmandiev. It's nice to have you here today. I'm looking forward to our talk about your farm, your experience, and what is best for the soil, in your opinion, and your much appreciated experience. Thank you. Mr. Harmandiev, could you please give us a short introduction on the basics of your farming operation? The farm is located at the southwest corner of Bulgaria. We're 10 kilometers or 12 kilometers from Greece and 12 to 15 kilometers from Macedonia. But my customers are Bulgarians and we predominantly sell in Sofia, in the, in the capital city of Bulgaria, but also in, in the farm. Uh, so uh, I have uh, around 30 hectares of vineyards and uh, around 30 hectares of, uh, of land where I raise my uh, animals. Uh, so uh, back uh, 10 years ago, I started with raising with uh, uh, pastured broilers, pastured poultry that I slaughter at the farm and sell directly to customers. Then I added uh, uh, pastured pigs. So we started to sell them uh, meat and uh, then uh, I added uh, also beef and dairy cows. So we started to uh, sell them uh, also dairy products and, and uh, beef. So basically my concept is uh, uh, for the client to open the fridge and to see only me in the fridge. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very keen on uh, uh, stressing that I'm actually uh, raising pastured animals because when you raise pastured animals, your ultimate goal and your ultimate result is that you, you build soil. That's very interesting. Um, thanks for the introduction. The aim in our project is to improve the soil health in Europe's soils. Okay. Could you please describe your approach to soil health and how do you take care of your soil? Uh, my farm is based right now is based on a, on a, on the on the bottom of a former fish pond. So that means uh, a very, very poor soil. It's actually sand with very small organic uh, matter. And I managed for five years to increase quite uh, drastically the, so the, 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 the soil organic matter, the, the humus, via animals. I always have a field crop. Uh, be it alfalfa or be it a permanent uh, 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 herbal lay. Uh, and uh, also I, I intercrop with direct seed drill. I, I, I intercrop during the winter um, anything that is annual, like uh, you, it could be wheat, it could be uh, rye, or, or, or a mixture. So basically, uh, when the, the permanent pasture is, uh, is dormant during the winter season, I catch the winter growth of the winter growth potential of the, of the winter annual. So this way I, I feed the soil microorganisms during the dormant period of the main crop. Uh, everything is used for for uh, for the for food of the animals. We always change the paddocks. So and basically we break the parasite cycle, which is the, very much the salatin way of doing things. So you you always follow one animal with another animal. We we move every day the hands. Uh, the, the broilers, we move every three days the hens and we move every day the cows and we move around every 14 days the, 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 the pigs. So it's a constant, uh, um, you know, change. One place is, is uh, passed by the same animals not more than two times per year. 
it's like a five-star hotel where they change the, the, the line and every day. And this is very important to, to have to, to change the patterns. So basically, I have a field crop. The, the animals are, are grazing and also uh, trampling the, 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 the plants. Uh, there is a lot of urine, a lot of uh, shit on the on the on the on the soil, and and it it creates it creates uh, soil. What's your approach to the soil health in your vineyards? In the vineyards, we we do uh, cover cropping, and then we mulch the mulch the cover crop, but. I, as I said, my dream is to integrate animals and actually to, to graze this cover crop and to return uh, the cover crop in terms of, uh, you know, uh, shit. For me, shit is gold, so <laughs> gold shit um, uh, to, the, to the land. I do have problems with the soil in the vineyards because it's, a, it's, a, it's an area where there is a very little humus content, very little organic content because of the very high heat during the summer. We have, so we are actually, we are Northern Greece rather than Southern Bulgaria. And uh, we have a, you know, easier, e easily we have 44 degrees with a lot of wind. So we have a sun erosion, we have, um, we have wind erosion, uh, and uh, it's it's a it's an exhausted soil. So, uh, and also it's a very very dry situation. So basically, we have to invest in the soil. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we are going to be desertified. Could you please tell me more about your experience with using compost on your farm? We do deep bedding that we compost afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there's this compost we return back to the land again. Deep bedding means uh, any carbonaceous matter that you put on the on the bottom of the barn. Mm -hmm. So it could be straw, it could be uh, uh, wood shavings, anything anything that uh, contain, co uh, contains carbon. Usually we put. Uh, EM1, that is effective microorganisms, uh, you, you spray over, over the bedding. And this bacteria starts to eat the, the, what they can eat in the bedding, and they drink the water and they heat, and they heat the, the bedding. And basically, you have like a floor heating for the animals during the winter wow. it's very funny uh, you, you have you know um uh like steam coming out of the of the bedding uh and and this way you you don't let pathogens pathogens to to take over the bedding basically using this probiotic this helps the animals, but also uh, starts also the, the composting process in the correct uh, direction. But then this is a very, very good uh, uh, source for composting. Then we put it, uh, put it on piles and we compost, compost it. And then we have very nice material again to return to the soil. Have you had any... Mm pathogen problem in, in, in your soil or any nematode problem? No, to be honest, no. To be honest, no. Um, well, I have to say that uh, basically for me, whatever is on the ground is food. Be it weeds or be it bugs, because if, if they're, they're bugs, then I let the hands in. If they're weeds, then I let the, the cows in and they eat. They don't discriminate with, uh, um, with weeds. They simply eat them. So 
So uh, when you have uh, enough different animals, you have to attack any anything from different angle and uh, without uh, uh, large cost. If if you would give a recommendation to your fellow European farmers, what would that be? Graze animals and move them. I enjoy very much of uh, having of seeing my animals on the, on pasturing, grazing on the on the field, because they feel very well. They're very calm, very happy, and I'm then. When my animals are happy, I'm happy too. Uh, I have. Um, I, I think uh, when I travel, my my sight, my my eyes are hungry for animals on the field. But usually, I see a lot of uh, tractors carrying bales rather than animals grazing on the fields. Um, I don't know why is that so. Perhaps the European farmers are very uh, rich and have enough money for tractors and fuel and everything then that goes with this uh, equipment. But it's a lot of work and that's a lot of efforts while while the cow has mouth and four legs and they can go out and graze and, and enjoy their life. And this to be quite uh, good also for the owner of the cow. And uh, what would you be a most important recommendation regarding um, soil health or the improvement of soil fertility? The soil health and the soil fertility is uh, the, uh, the constant movement of the animals always provide cover for the soil so that either do the, the animals so that to protect the soil from the sun rays and also also feed the bacteria feed the microbiomes in the soil so either sheet or straw or whatever you have and move the animals once they have grazed so that to allow for any cover to to reappear again if if it's a, a pasture situation or graze to the bottom and then plant whatever you want and and plow less i would recommend for the farmers to have a look at the direct uh, uh, in the no-till equipment, because for me the no-till combined with animals is is very good thing. Because otherwise, no-till without animals equals glyphosate equals Roundup. So you found a solution to to terminate your cover crops with the animal grazing. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so. It's very interesting. And then the, the cover crop becomes, suddenly the cover crop becomes cash crop. Yeah. So you have two cash crops. Uh huh. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, thanks for your time, Mr. Harmandiev. I'm looking forward to a great discussion right now. It was very interesting points you, you put together. And thank you. My pleasure.